Hi everyone, this video is about the timing of the sacred secretion um, and I've decided to make this video due to the fact that the question I get asked the most often is what is the correct timing for raising the sacred secretion and how do I calculate it? Now, some of the information provided here is taken from my book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul. And if you are interested to know the original sources, they are all credited in the bibliography of that book. There is also a list of recommended books available on my website and in my Amazon store. Now, if you found this video, you are probably already aware of what the sacred secretion is and that it occurs monthly when the moon enters your individual birth or sun sign. But you may be unsure why this is the case and or where to find accurate information and advice as to which system should be used. Is it sidereal or is it tropical? If you are not familiar with the God-designed spiritual and biological phenomenon known as the sacred secretion and also known by many other incredible names throughout history, then I suggest watching my true anointing heaven on earth video first or indeed reading my book The God Design Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul. Otherwise let's get started. Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41 of the King James Version clearly highlights the varied energies produced by the sun, moon and stars and science further bolsters their potent and valuable influences. So let's have a look at that scripture. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Simply put, the moon's energy is magnetic and the sun's energy is electric. Together, they are the electromagnetic female moon and male sun. And the stars, like our own individual personalities, are all different in their energetic qualities and potentials. So, how exactly do the energies of the sun, moon and stars aspect towards earth and into our bodies and where do the energies when do the energies align to complement one another at certain times for certain individuals well speaking in terms of the macrocosm and the microcosm it's important to visualize the correct associations between the human microcosm and the universal macrocosm the astrological constellations, star or sun signs, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces are the body. The moon is the soul. The sun is the spirit. Finally, the remaining visible planets, so Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus and Mercury, equal the five physical senses. Biblically, they were the five kings that had to be put to death by having their necks stood on. And that symbolises our ability to overcome our carnal nature. And it is this connection that leaves us susceptible to various combinations of subtle energetic influences. If you prefer the scientific perspective, 
This can also be seen in quantum physics as the implicate order of physicist David Bohm, who proposes that the physical, psychic and spiritual realms are ultimately connected. Evidence for this hypothesis can be found in the scientific study of bioelectrical and biochemical processes. Let's have a quick look at this quote. The idea of the coupling of the bioelectrical and biochemical process in the human organism is alien to the classical research on the psychological life. This new approach postulates a holistic account of the human being and his environment. The model, in referring to psychology, is very inspiring because it postulates the reception of information from the environment, not only via sense receptors, but also through the entire mass of the biological organism, understood as organic, piezoelectric, pyroelectric and semiconductors. And that is from Bioplasma Concept of Consciousness by Adam Gregors Ademski. And Plutarch said that the divine spirit is to the soul what the soul is to the body. This means that in the same way that the sun reflects light off of our moon down to earth, the spirit shines light into our body via the soul. Within the human brain, this is physiologically paralleled by the pineal gland, which represents the sun and the moon gland, which can modify and reflect, is the pituitary gland. Again, further information about how and why this is an integral part of the understanding of the sacred secretion is available in my book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul. But to summarise, According to occult science, distant stars, as well as our local sun, which is also a star, emanate an invisible stellar influence which acts in a subtle way throughout the entire universe. This stellar influence that we receive from our sun are the solar seeds described by occult science and also known as the solar wind in modern science. The combined energies of distant planets, stars and our nearby sun are what the moon reflects into our human organism. It, or the divine energy of planets, stars, sun and moon, comes into our bodies as one but upon arrival, it is divided into two subtle energy streams, into what are known as the Pingala and Ida Nadis. The Pingala Nadi carries the male solar electric energy and the Ida Nadi carries the female lunar magnetic energy in order to manifest our material reality. It is the preserving of this sacred secretion that gives the divided energy the opportunity to reunite, thus allowing them to fructify within us, therefore raising our vibratory frequency and upgrading melatonin for that felt experience of the sacred secretion. Okay. So now we understand the importance of the alignment of these subtle energies, not only in the universal macrocosm, but also in the internal microcosm by conditioning our chakras or energy centers. Let's find out when this actually occurs. So the lesser known lunisolar solar calendar incorporates the phases of the moon as well as the time of the solar year. 
This sacred Luni solar calendar is used in many cultures, including Hebrew, Buddhist, Hindu, Chinese, Tibetan, and Korean. But unfortunately, its importance has been forgotten or indeed overlooked by the Western world where the common calendar is mainly based upon the 365 day solar year alone. But according to Thomas Burgoyne, the lunar solar year is the most perfect astronomical cycle. He said, this Naros is the lunisolar Naros or Sibylline year. It is composed of 31 periods of 19 years and one of 11 and is the most perfect of astronomical cycles. And although no chronologer has mentioned it at length, it is the most ancient of all. It consists of 600 years or 7,200 solar months or 219,146 and a half days and this same number of days 219,146 and a half gives 600 years consisting of 365 days 5 hours 51 minutes and 36 seconds which differs less than 3 minutes from what the length is observed to be this day and that is from the light of Egypt. Now in summary of that, one Neronian year is the same length as one full lunar solar cycle, which is approximately 600 years or 7,200 solar months. The synodic period of the moon, including the sidereal period or 2.5 day time delta, is 29.53 days long. And that is the amount of time it takes for the moon to travel through all 12 sun signs. These loony solar cycles are what the Bible is referring to when it says, and God said, let there be lights, sun, moon, stars, in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for sun signs and for seasons and for days and years. And that is Genesis 114 King James Version. The Bible says that each month starts on the day of the new moon and Numbers 1010 and Psalm 813. The new moon is the first appearance of a sliver of the moon after it's been completely dark or seemingly invisible for a few days. In Exodus 12:2 God told Ma Moses that the year should begin in spring. This first month was known as Abib and began after the spring equinox, approximately 18th to 22nd of March. Two weeks or 14 days after the spring equinox is the correct time for the Passover. Biblically, the Passover symbolises the freeing of the spiritual man from captivity of the sense man, i.e. the slaves escaping from Egypt. There are more feasts listed in Leviticus, all of which correspond with, of course, the lights in the firmament. All of this evidence equates to the reason why the Luni solar calendar is the most significant of all and must be used when observing your dates for the sacred secretion. Now, let's look at how we should calculate our own specific days. Due to the moon void, the correct time to start the process of sacred secretion preservation is approximately 12 to 24 hours before the moon enters your individual sun sign or the zodiacal sign that you were born under. The moon void is the period of time when the moon stops aspecting or aligning to planets in one sun sign constellation while it moves into the next. But should this be calculated using the tropical system, 
or the sidereal system. You may be familiar with these two main systems, tropical and sidereal. So which one is correct? Well, research shows that in fact both systems correspond to one another and both are used in biodynamic ag agriculture. The tropical zodiac is the position of the sun referenced against the Earth's horizon. And the sidereal zodiac is the position of the sun referenced against the stars. Arguably, the sidereal system is more accurate than the tropical system calculated by the seasons. Um, and this is because the sidereal system allows for the fact that not all of the constellations are the same size. However, the tropical system does coincide directly with the equinoxes and also offers a compelling set of reasons for the accuracy of its results. So, can both zodiacal systems be compared against one another? Yes. When represented as wheels, and we all know how important wheels are, um, they can be superimposed to make one comprehensive calculator. To align the two systems, the sun can be used as a common point and by comparing the two wheels, a difference of around 25 degrees is found between them. Over time, it has been realized that the difference is gradually increasing and that the seasons are slowly moving in relation to the star background by one degree every 70 or so years. And this is what's known as the precession of the equinoxes. Now, this highlights a beautiful part of the God design, which is revealed through the comparison of these two systems, namely the simple and marvelous fact that the heavenly zodiac, sidereal, is actually reflected or imprinted onto the earth giving us the tropical zodiac. And this is why both systems are used in biodynamic agriculture. Due to these facts, it's a tough decision to make to decide which system to use. But looking for further evidence reveals a very interesting quote from George W. Carey in the book God, man, the word made flesh. So let's have a quick look at that. The date they made the sun enter Aries was March 21st. Why? March 21st should be the first day of Aries, the head. April 19th should be the first day of Taurus, the neck, and so on through the 12 signs. But these designing schemers knew that by thus suppressing the truth, the people might come to realise what was meant by the heavens declare the glory of God. Again, the moon in its monthly round of 29 and a half days enters the outer stars or suns of a constellation two and one half days before it enters the central suns of the constellations that are known as the signs of the zodiac or the circle of beasts, biblically the Maseroth. But even unto this day, the whole Antichrist world, except the astrologers, go by almanac, tropical system, that make the moon enter a sign of the zodiac two and one half days before it does enter it and thus perpetuate the lie of the pagan Constantine, the Antichrist. And that is from page 92 of um, The God-Man, the Word-Made-Flesh, uh, chapter The Antichrist. 
Now this quote is compellingly backed up by the fact that the tropical system is more or less two and one half days ahead of the sidereal system. Although I personally find the tone a little harsh and assumptive due to the fact that the difference between the two systems actually only boils down to a simple matter of space, distance and of course perspective. If you prefer to be meticulous in your own planning and practice, there are lots of amazing apps available. Um, one of them is Stellarium. This shows you a view of the actual stars via an intuitive satellite system on the screen of your phone or tablet or whatever. Um, and then Dulux Moon, which I use, um, which actually allows you to switch between two modes, tropical and sidereal. Now, for reasons discussed in this video and further points made in my book, I pre personally prefer to observe both the tropical and sidereal calendars because they do coincide with one another. And an easy way to remember it if you're using a tropical tropical calendar is that the sidereal times are approximately 2.5 days after the tropical times. So thank you very much for watching. I have supplied the link to Astro Calendar which explains very clearly um, the importance of both the tropical and sidereal systems um, in the description box and there's actually a calendar available through that website here are the links to my website, social media, purchasing my book and my Freedom Yoga app. Thanks again for watching. Please do leave your comments. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, peace and light.